In today's world, we see that sometimes we may have to face various challenging occasions. There may be times wherein we feel that a particular task may be impossible. We may be worried, we may be anxious about that particular task or activity. But then we realize that when we take everything upon ourselves, it seems heavy, it seems impossible. But when we surrender ourselves and place everything in the hands of the Lord, we see that we are given this grace, we are given this strength and confidence in order to carry out that same task. In other words, what happens is the task does not change, the situation does not change, but we get strength, confidence, a whole perspective regarding that changes and we are able to deal with it in a more effective manner. And this is what it means by placing our faith and trust in the Lord. Secondly, from my experience, it is quite evident that when we prepare for something, we are in a better position to understand it or to know it better. Similarly, when we keep all the ingredients ready, preparing a particular dish becomes easier because you do only then have to add the ingredients in proportion. But if the initial preparation is not done, we realize that it becomes a chaotic situation when it comes to preparing the dish. And when we speak about initial preparation, one thing that comes to our mind is preparing the way of the Lord, the role of John the Baptist. And today we celebrate the solemnity of the birth of St. John the Baptist. And as we read today's gospel passage, we may come across a line wherein it is said that the people knew that the hand of the Lord was upon him. Now what were the events that basically led the people to think of this? And in what way was John the Baptist instrumental in preparing the people to receive Jesus in their midst? Well, let's find that out during today's episode of Tea Time with the Word. But before we can begin our reflection, let us take a look at the readings for Thursday in the 12th week of Ordinary Time. Today's first reading is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 49, verses 1 to 6. And the second reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, verses 22 to 26. And the Gospel is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 57 to 66 and verse 80. Now, the Nativity of John the Baptist is a great feast for the Catholic Church. And it is quite evident because this feast reminds us of the image of John the Baptist standing in the river, baptizing people and also baptizing Jesus. In a way, today's feast is considered as a feast of life. Why? Because through baptism, we see people were given a new lease of life. People were given a new opportunity to experience and know God. People were washed away from their sins. And it is by the works of John the Baptist that God had implanted in him a mission to bring the messages that would prepare the people in order to receive Jesus. In other words, we see that John's mission was very much important for preparing the way of the Lord. And if you observe the readings of today, the readings of today are particularly selected in order to symbolize the role that John the Baptist played. 
For example, to celebrate the feast, the church has given the servant song from the book of Isaiah as the first reading of today. And this tells us the formation of a person who is called for God's mission on earth, especially to restore the scattered tribe of Israel. And in the first reading, we see that how the servant becomes the instrument, how that person becomes an instrument of God in order to carry out the works of the Lord. In other words, we see all of us are given mission and we are called to be instruments of the Lord because if we consider ourselves capable of doing everything, we realize that because of our own egos, because of our overconfidence, we may not be able to carry out the task that is given to us. But if we place ourselves in the hands of God, if we become instruments, then the Lord will be able to help us to do things that are appropriate in our lives. In other words, just as the clay allows itself to be molded by the potter, we too need to be like that clay so that God can mold our lives, so that God can make us better individuals who can reach out to others. And we see that it was not enough for one person in order to save the people. Therefore, we see that in order to receive Jesus, the people had to be prepared. But we see that even though there were some who did not believe, but nonetheless, John carried his mission. John baptized people. He preached repentance. And in this way, he was able to prepare the people in order to receive Jesus in their midst. And in a way, the character of John the Baptist teaches us about the virtue of humility. John was the one who was coming first in order to prepare the ground for Jesus. In other words, he was doing the groundwork. And we see that he was a person who was very humble. He did not take credit for what he was doing. And therefore, in today's second reading from the Acts of the Apostles, Paul tells the people about the significance of the mission of John the Baptist. And therefore, John says, with all his humility, I am not fit even to untie the sandals, for he who is coming after me is greater than I. How different the world would have been if all of us would have respected the roles of others, if all of us would have been humble and generous and responsible for what we are do given the task, just as John the Baptist. We see that the world would be a completely different place. And thus we see that John becomes the instrument of God who prepared the Israelites to receive the good news that they were so waiting to hear about. And therefore, all of us are given the task of being heralds of the good news. We are called to be messengers. We are called to preach the gospel of life, love and joy. And this can be done through our words and actions. So we don't need a lot of preparation for this. A simple word of appreciation, a simple smile can make a difference in the lives of others. And therefore, each one of us have been given this mission in our own ways, according to our capabilities and according to our abilities to preach the message of love, mercy and repentance to those whom we encounter. If we turn our attention to today's gospel passage, first and foremost, here we see the significance of the births of Jesus and of John the Baptist. Now we see that it was through divine intervention that a barren woman, Elizabeth, and a virgin, Mary, were able to conceive. And what does this tell us? This tells us that for God, nothing is impossible. God can work wonders in our lives. He can do miracles. 
all that we need to do is place our faith and trust in him and therefore today's gospel passage is all about trusting in the lord putting our faith in him allowing him to lead us on if we do this we realize that we will be given the grace and the strength to face whatever hardships and challenges may come in our lives and when we speak about surrendering ourselves to god it does not mean that we become passive it does not mean that we do not do anything it means that we do our part but we allow god to take care of the rest we place our faith in him and we tell him lord i have done my part you do the rest and if we have this attitude towards life we see that our life would be much more peaceful and meaningful in a way we see that it is in and through us that god can work wonders all of us are called to be instruments in the hands of the lord and today we can ask ourselves this question am i doing enough to allow god to work in and through me and as we reflect on the readings of the day let us ask the lord for the grace that he may give us the strength to face the challenges in life that he may allow us to be instruments in his hands we pray for the grace to be able to place our faith and trust in the lord so that all that we do we do for his glory and we do it in and through him amen